Building a game collection on the cheap in 2021 is a lot about being in the right place at the right time, and we kind of feel like the time is now for handheld video games. What are we drinking today? Today we're drinking KBS Cinnamon Vanilla Cocoa Edition by Founders. This is an Imperial Stat with coffee, cinnamon, and vanilla extract. All right, you know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you never miss one of our bi-weekly uploads. And sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to, and let's take a look at why we think the time is now to collect handheld consoles. Hey, Sean from the Nerdler here, and you're watching Gaming Off the Grid. Now go away. If you want to build a video game collection on the cheap, you have got to be ahead of the curve. You've got to be looking for things before everyone else is. And we think the time is now for handheld gaming. Wow. We don't talk a lot about handhelds. We don't. And we don't have a huge knowledge base uh, as it uh, pertains to handheld gaming. But what we do have is a lot of experience yeah. out in the wild game hunting. Boots on the ground. And we are finding a ton of PlayStation related handhelds, PSP, PS Vita, but even more DS and 3DS stuff. Oh, yes. Even 2DS stuff. We find, I think, what was it? Today we found a 2DS. Yeah, 2DS yeah. XL. Uh, which, those things are badass. We've been finding them left and right more and more, and I know a lot of handhelds aren't in production anymore, so they're just going to get more and more rare. I think just the price is going to start going like this. Yeah. And it, it already is for the Vita. The Vita's already crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think across the board, you know, for Vita and DS stuff, we're seeing a pretty big climb on the DS. PSP, it's got its games that are expensive, but PSP, a ton of those were sold. But... A ton of DS and 3DS, we'll just say DS, that, that will be the umbrella term for everything Nintendo DS and 3DS related. DS stuff sold in abundance. The install base is insane. However, typically supply and demand doesn't seem to affect Nintendo. No, it doesn't. If their name's on it, there's collectability there. Yeah, there's nostalgia too, because kids grew up playing the handheld gaming because it was more driven towards kids and now they're getting to that point where they have disposable income and they're like oh i remember playing that on the road or playing yeah. that in my bedroom when growing up so i want to play nintendo again 3ds oh man <laughs> you in that game uh 3ds came out i believe in 2011 so i don't quite think we're fully on that Not oh yet. shit yeah. i want to play my old games uh position yet with the ds but a lot of people's kids are out of the house. You know, if they had a DS in 2011, that's 10 years ago. Maybe they were 9, 10 years old, and now they're moving out of the house. So we're finding them at garage sales a ton. Th uh, thrift stores and pawn shops, DS games every single time oh, I go in there. They're always there. Now, much like I would say the Nintendo Wii, there's a ton of what I would call shovelware. Yeah, there's a lot of games that are garbage there are but man but. if you can find the monster hunter games the pokemon games the mario related games yes there is some serious changing there and then when it you look at the vita such a low install base i think it sold less than three million units in the united states which is where we game hunt yeah when you put that in perspective that stuff's gonna dry up quick and collectors are going freaking ape shit on the vita right now it, that's why it's going for so much. I feel like what the Vita's doing is gonna start happening with other things, obviously probably not as spiked because of the install base, but handheld games, man. I mean, obviously there's Game Boy, like the earlier handheld stuff. Yeah. That stuff, I don't know if that stuff's gonna get as crazy. I mean, it's. I think that stuff is where it's gonna be. I think it's it's had its moment, it's had its little resurgence, it's where it's going to reside yeah. from a price standpoint. With obviously market inflation, raising prices ever so slightly year after year. But those those consoles, I think the the Game Boy Advance, SP, Color, and Game Boy. Yep. There's so many better ways to play those games that I think from a hardware standpoint, there's not as much value there as I mean. Of, of course, people want the games, but you can play them, you know, on your GameCube, your Super Game Boy, um, all sorts of ways to play those. I also think the Switch is going to get a Game Boy Player at some point. Yeah, that'd be sweet. But the ones we're really honing in on, the PSP, the Vita, the modern ones, and the DS, there's not a great way 
Obviously, there's other ways to emulate, but not a great way to actually play the games, you know, on console. There's a few DS games here and there you can download on the Wii U, but the PSP and Vita catalog, a little bit of digital download available on the Sony platforms, but not all the yeah, way. Not really. I feel like the handheld scene is like a different scene than console gaming. Yeah. And it's a scene that... I feel like it gets brushed under the rug a lot. You know? Yeah, I mean, and for us, we're not huge handheld gamers, but we have started going ham on the Vita and uh, the, the DS stuff because we're finding it a lot for one. So it's really fun to collect. I think part of collecting that you gotta you gotta understand is one you want to be in the right place at the right time and collect yes. for things before everyone else is, but it makes it more fun too. When you go out garage sailing and spend a whole Saturday morning doing that, or you stop at pawn shops and thrift stores and you never find anything, that kind of sucks. So if you're out there collecting right now for the Sega Genesis, good luck. It might not be that fun for you to go to those type of places. Now maybe go to game stores, conventions, whatever. But when you're out doing it that way, which is how we've built the majority of what you see behind us in our game room, it's it's fun to look for stuff that's available. I mean, yeah. that's just human nature. You could, after about you know 10, 15 stops and not finding shit, you kind of get discouraged. Yeah, the wind goes out of your sails really quick. So, I think I think now you gotta strike. There are still even some 3DS games in stores. Oh yeah, like sealed steel. Yeah, steel. and I think you know if you're looking for a DS for your collection from a console perspective, I highly recommend the 2DS XL. Oh, yes. It doesn't do the 3D stuff, so if that's important to you, read your own mail. It's never been important no, to me. No, it hurts my eyes, dude. But I love the size of the screen. I love the feel of the joystick, the D-pad. I think it's the best one they put out, in my humble opinion. I, I would totally agree. Dude, it just plays so good. Yeah, did, did you ever get into the 3D piece of it? I The 3D piece hurts my eyes. Like, I, I would turn it on occasionally because my siblings had it. And you're just like, oh, up. that's cool. I was like, that's cool, but like... I'm not like at the IMAX, you know, watching a 3D movie. I'm at, in the car. Yeah. I don't need 3D. It's, it just seemed weird to me, but it's kind of cool they did it. But I think DS stuff is going to be insane. I think it's going to be flipping insane. I think the Vita will be very, very similar collector uh, market of like a Sega Saturn, a Dreamcast. Ooh. I'm just looking at the install base. I believe All In Worldwide sold about 16 million. That kind of puts it in that ballpark. I think the PSP... It'll keep growing over time, but it did do very well. Yeah, like 80 plus million in sales. Yeah. And and it's weird. Here like this last year, we have been finding way more PSP games than we ever have. I, I think people are just cleaning out their houses. You know, people are moving to college, yeah. so they got all this extra stuff. And We're finding the UMD movies a lot, like in the DVD I section. I get so excited. Yeah. And I'm not going to watch a movie on my PSP, but I still want to pick it up for some reason, you know? I have a Metallica concert on on one of those and it's just badass it's just awesome I, I, why i don't know next time we're on a plane dude <laughs> yeah. we're watching the yeah, there we go yes. uh but guys it, this has been fun for us we are not the handheld gaming experts if that's what you're looking for you might not enjoy our channel a whole lot but it's been really fun for us to dive into it and start trying to become experts on handheld gaming because it's really easy to do right now yeah i would say of the three we mentioned the vita is the hardest to find in the wild and the most expensive Yep, but PSP, DS stuff. DS is, stuff is everywhere. Yeah, we have a Purple Galaxy 3DS original that we found, um, I believe it was 30 bucks at a pawn shop. I've got a doorstop 2DS red and black model that, that I found. So cool. CIB, five bucks at a garage and sale. And it came with Mario Kart. I had a coworker give me a 2DS XL, the black and uh, turquoise one. So cool. Just give it to me. Bunch of freaking games. No, ca no cases for the games, but, but still still a gift, so I'm not going to complain. It's kind of <laughs> like when you get a sweater. I needed a sweater. don't like the one Grandma got me. But uh, this stuff is just out there in abundance. Uh, I think we have two or three DSs listed on our eBay page right now. It's everywhere. Yeah. And I think, really, we're looking at about a three- to five-year run where it's going to be... It's going to be... Yeah, I feel like we're going to be finding it for a while. Yeah. But if you are just slightly interested in handheld gaming or you think you ever want to get into yeah. th the handheld scene i think now is the time because i don't think and i think we've already said this before in old episodes i don't think handhelds are ever going to come back i don't think i mean I'm obviously with it's going to be like switch related stuff you know like where you can do both i don't think it's just going to be just handhelds obviously the switch light is just is just handheld but yeah that's, that's its own thing it's kind of console yeah 
I, I totally agree with you, and I think even the Vita was kind of trying to do that hybrid. They didn't do it very well. Yeah. M mismanaged marketing. Uh, we, and like you said, we did an episode kind of talking about that not that long ago. But I think if handheld gaming stays on the scene, it's going to be mobile phone related, or it's going to be yeah. like the Nintendo Switch where it's a hybrid. These dedicated handheld consoles and the kids that had them they're going to be wanting their old shit. They're going to be wanting yep. these games. The Pokemon Diamond Platinum. These games are insane prices already. And it's just going to keep going up. And we found each one of those that I just referenced at a pawn shop. And what's crazy for is... two bucks a piece. We, we found... We we keep finding them loose. So that means the boxes are gone. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be even harder if you want to go complete in box collecting for this handheld. It's going to be even harder. I, I think you made an awesome point there. For whatever reason... All three of these consoles, I think it's because it was on the go and a lot of people bought cases. Bought cases so then they could carry more games. It's far more common. To even the UMDs. Yeah, they're they're loose. To find them loose, DS carts, Vita carts, we find them loose in little Ziplocs all the time at these thrift stores and, and pawn shops. You find one CIB, you might want to get on it. Yeah. There's also a lot of really weird shit on the DS yes. that's worth a lot of money, like... Like, look just for if, if when you see a DS game and you're like, that's shovel or that's a piece of shit, take the time, scan it on your eBay app or however you look up prices. Not always the case. There's like a 50 classic games 3D that's like a $50 game. Holy crap. I, it, I would just look over that. It looks game. like a piece of shit. <laughs> and it probably is. But it, it the market will get nuts. The time is now. I think the time is now for PSP and 3ds i really yeah. think it's a time for the ds stuff i think the ship has almost left the 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 building or the the, the yard dock the dock that's <laughs> yeah. a good one i think it's almost left the dock for the vita i think we're i think we're behind the curve yeah we are way behind and but if we you find ourselves in the wild dude yeah uh that's strike. awesome yeah almost everything vita related is worth a ton uh, we were fortunate we i think we got our vita i think i got it at a garage sale the walking dead uh like episode one edition I think it was like 25 bucks Damn. got some games and i've got a few more the cool thing about the vita that makes it kind of fun to collect is like it's few and far between but limited run still is kind of releasing They're some games yeah, on the vita which is kind of cool it's got a cult following and anytime something has a cult following that's why we're so hot on the trail of the wii u the wii u because it's it's kind of in that same boat yeah you know, more console trip. you find the cult followings and you know like your sega fans your vita fans your wii u fans they're all sipping on the same Kool-Aid. So I think there's some money to be made there if you find those in the wild. But I really think of everything we've talked about in this episode, set your compass or your optical lens to be looking for DS stuff. Uh, we got to talk about this beer. This is Founders KBS Cinnamon Vanilla Cocoa Edition. This is a variant of their KBS, which their standalone KBS is one of the best stouts I've ever had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the variants are so good as well. What do you think? Um, you know, it's it's really weird because this is more of a winter brew. KBS has always kind of been that way. And Founders, I really, uh, I, I just consider them like one of the kings of stouts. So it's fall. And it's so strange that like in our area anyways, in like July, October beers are coming out. And in October, October Christmas beers are yes. coming out. So this should be... A, a brew that we're drinking later on but the way th the beer game works is these would probably all be gone by the time we would want to drink them so we're drinking it a little out of season i guess is the moral of the story this is really really good i'm going back and forth in my head of do i like this more than the original i'd have to try them next to each other my gut says i i don't but i do like this a lot and other than like the choco vesa i don't Ooh. tend to love cinnamon in my beer but yep. this is so subtle. The way the cinnamon comes through on this beer, you get that nice cinnamon taste, but it's not overpowering because cinnamon is a very strong taste. But it's just subtly in yeah. there. And then like that vanilla helps smooth it out. Yep. Ah, man, this beer is like really rich. It is. Really smooth. Really freaking good. And I don't know exactly what it comes in at percentage-wise, but I'm guessing it's pretty damn high. This is definitely a thick sipper. This is, yeah. This is, uh, man, Founders... They freaking know what they're, they're doing. They're one of the best. Yeah. One of the best in the stout game for sure. Uh, they've got some other stuff. And actually, we have two non founder stouts in the uh, fridge that will be in future episodes. Oh, I'm excited for those. Yeah. Um, strong finish here on this one. Coffee, dark chocolate. Yeah. Getting that a ton on the finish. Nice, nice and rich. It is. Very good brew. Um, guys, if anything, um, these type of videos, 
we, we just love bringing what we're seeing out in the wild to you to help you in your game hunting and collecting endeavors. We take pride in the fact that we haven't overspent for our collection. Our collection has been paid for and then some yeah. by noticing these trends. And following them. Yeah, and there's a lot of times you find stuff and and you kind of wish you could keep it. Like, we just listed a PS2 Slim that we're like, that's really mint. Oh, it was beautiful. It's brand new. But sometimes you, you, you buy a bunch of stuff and it's like, yeah, I want that one or two games out of that. But the rest of it will pay for everything and then some. And I think... Just lately, I've been doing so well in the handheld area, and I've been finding this stuff like crazy. And so it's only fitting that we tell you what we're seeing in yeah. the wild. Guys, I know I already said it, but if you want to get into handheld gaming, now I think is the time, especially on that modern, I guess it's not really modern, but you know, the newer handhelds, uh -huh. now is the freaking time before it's too late. Don't freaking sleep on it yeah. and miss it like the Vita. Because it's going to get crazy. Yeah, I think the Vita is a perfect example of why you got to get on the 3DS now. Yeah. Because in we're case, all getting in case smacked you around, around, you know, on the Vita side of things. But anyways, we always appreciate you tuning in, subscribing to the channel. Best of luck out there building your collection. We'll see you next time right here on Gaming Off The Grid. All right, let's try this bad boy. All right. Now we're so now we know that's not just our taste buds. <laughs>